Let's go ahead and get this done. My party people, even if you have no idea how to do the math of this problem, you should absolutely know what the question is asking you to find. Can you give me what this question is asking us to find in a couple of words in English, not math, in English? What is it that we're trying to find? Shalada, that's correct. The revolution is around the wheel. But the question is, again, what is it that we're looking for here in English? In English. We're looking for distance. I wouldn't say distance around the wheel. Mm -hmm. In a way, yes. In a way, that is correct. But if we're talking about pure English, everyone, is it safe to say that if you notice here, wheel of a car, how far will the wheel go or travel after 90 revolutions? So is it safe to say that we have this perfectly designed wheel here by me? And is it safe to say that uh, pretty much what we're doing is we're seeing how far this wheel goes after 90, what is that, 90, what is that word there? Revolutions. Everyone, is it fair to say that we're looking for distance after 90 of those supposed revolutions? I don't know what revolutions means yet. We'll, we'll talk about that. But is it safe to say that we're looking for a distance? that the wheel travels. Okay, cool. Again, this is the first step we need to take, guys. First step we need to take is what's the question? And it says, how far? How far? That's distance. How far will the wheel travel? So if this is my wheel right here, then we're trying to figure out how far that wheel goes after 90 of those revolutions. But it's clear we're trying to see how far the wheel goes. So with that said, let's talk about that word right over here. The word of the day presented by PBS Studios is revolutions. And before we continue, one of the main frustrations that so many people have with the ASVAB is not knowing what to study and how to study to begin with. So if you're one of those people that can do a good job if everything's lined up for you, then go ahead and join our program. We have all the classes, all the recordings, all the courses with practice questions, with videos, and you can text me all the way up until you pass. So that's how it works. It's very simple, straightforward, and it gets you to the score and the job you want. Check out the link in the description of this video to learn more and sign up now. Who here knows what revolutions means? For one bonus brownie point, right, one full complete term. That's what a revolution means. That's what a revolution is. If we're talking about, hey, um, you know, what's a full revolution in this chair that I'm sitting in? This is what it looks like. Probably gonna break some furniture, but boom. One revolution, one turn. If we're talking about the revolution, you know, going one revolution around this wheel here, let me use a different color. That's gonna be going one time around one time around so allow me to go ahead and grab this and well not that part down here but we're saying hey if we turn if we take this wheel and we turn this wheel 90 times going over and over and over again we're basically asking how far is the wheel if we turn it 90 times is that making a little more sense guys again one revolution is one turn, one complete rotation here. So what we're asking for is, I'm sorry, it's getting bigger and smaller, keep it the same size. But what I'm asking you is, do you understand that one revolution is one complete turn of the circle? So what we're looking for is 90 complete turns of the circle or of the wheel. Is that making a little more sense before we continue? Cool, because you don't need to understand circumference and all that to understand what a wheel turning feels like, right? Now, this is where we're gonna start applying the math behind it. And this is gonna be for circles. So allow me to write this here. This is going to be unit nine in arithmetic reasoning. Specifically, unit nine is right there. Cool, unit nine is specifically for circles. So we're talking about circumference, area, and these types of problems that you see. So first things first, everybody, how are we gonna get to 90 revolutions? Well, take it step by step. And this is how you should be thinking in most questions. 
Everyone, is it true that if we want to find 90 of these revolutions, 90 of them, is it true that we could just find one revolution and then multiply it by 90? Is that true? Okay. Okay. And if and I see that everybody's saying yes, but even if there's somebody out there that's a little shy, not totally understanding, if I wanted to find, let's go ahead and say the price of 90 Kit Kat bars, I could find the price of one Kit Kat bar, multiply it by 90. Is that true? Theoretically speaking. Yeah. Okay, so if we're talking about, let's say, running laps on the track, you're doing some PT, trying to run laps on the track, you want to see how far 90 laps is. Everyone, is it true that if we found a distance for one lap, multiply by 90 to get 90? Is that true? And that's where we want to be. Bingo. Now, that's it. We find the distance for one revolution of the wheel. We multiply by 90. And so the only question that's left is, how the heck do we find one revolution? That should be the biggest question of the day. Here's how we do it. One revolution. Let's go and zoom on in just slightly, actually. Let me go ahead and take this, put this up here. So what we are trying to do is, again, find one revolution and then times 90. Then we will times 90. That is the game plan. That is the game plan. Who here, because we are given the radius, who here knows what the circumference of a circle is? Again, circumference is the same thing as one revolution. Because a circumference is how far it is on the outside. One revolution is as far as it goes on the outside. So we are looking for circumference. Who knows the formula for it? Yeah, Landa, the definition is the distance around the circle, but what is the formula for the circumference of a circle? Who knows? Boom, two, pi, two times pi times the radius, or two pi r to be short. But yes, write this down if you didn't have it, everybody. We have the circumference. Let me write this down here. Again, one revolution is the same thing as one circumference, one time around. And the circumference, C, here's the formula. It is 2 times pi times the radius. There are two formulas. One uses the diameter. But since we don't see diameter in this problem, forget about it. You don't need it. You don't need it. We have 2 times pi times the radius. Write that down. And... We know that the radius that we were told is 11 inches. We were told 11 is right here. But everybody, what are we going to replace the pi right there with? What are we going to replace the pi with? 3.14. Confused on where that came from? Right here. Right there. It says Hughes pi equals 3.14. So when we plug this in, this is what we have. Let me zoom on in. Don't worry. At the end, I'll zoom on out so you can take a picture. But what we have now is the circumference equals 2 times pi, which is 3.14, times 11, which was the radius. Before I continue, do you notice that once we know the formula, all we have to do is plug the right things into the right places? Is that making sense? Nice, 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 nice. So let's go ahead and proceed. Let's go ahead, now that we've plugged it in, hopefully, even if the, the formula was a little intimidating to you, well, I took care of that for us. And let's see if we can carry on now that we've gotten over that hump. Here we go. My party people, we can go ahead and do two times 3.14 first. We can do that for sure, no problem. What's two times 3.14, my party people? Man, some math is tough, for sure, but Hey, what else are you going to do with your free time? TikTok? Come on now. So here we go. 2 times 3.14. That's going to be 6.28. Sounds good. And then that's going to be times 11. 
Okay, so now we have to do 6.28 times 11. Oh, that looks like some tough math, but again, we just need to make sure that we take it one step at a time. Again, if this intimidates you, well, dealing with decimals is something you need to work on. If you're not done with the math basics, I'm, I'm pretty sure that I know what your problem is. Here we go. Everyone remind me, when we're multiplying decimals, what do we do with the decimals at first? What do we do with the decimals at first? Yeah, we just ignore them. Let's just ignore the decimals. At the end, we'll bring them all back. But for right now, don't worry about it. Pretend they're not there. Multiply as normal. So we'll start off here. 8 times 1, that's going to give us 8. 2 times 1, that's going to give us 2. 6 times 1, that's going to give us 6. Is it that easy? Yes, when you're multiplying by 1, things are easy. Next up, we'll go ahead and go to the next line right here, the next digit. So now we have, again, 8 times 1. Look at that. 2 times 1. Look at that. 6 times 1. Look at that. Not too crazy. Add it back together. We have 8. 2 plus 8 is 10. 6 plus 2 is 8. Plus the extra 1 is 9. And then we have the 6 still there. Boom. Now with that, Andrew, the reason we put the zero there is because we're going to the next place value. So this line here was dedicated to this one here. This line here is dedicated to this one. This one is in the tens place. So we put a zero so we can start in the tens place. That's why that is. And for those of you asking about how to study for the math basics, remember that with the math basics, you have your personalized progress dashboard. What that means is, Every single assignment you've completed has a check mark. Everything you haven't done has an X. Follow that dashboard prog or that progress dashboard. You're good to go. Super easy. Now, last thing we do, thank you, Tariq, is you bring those decimals back. We noticed that we had one, two decimals being used. So we will bring one, two decimals back. And that will be 69.08. Was that crazy, my party people, or was that doable? Was that crazy or was that doable? Right? Seems pretty straightforward, right? Seems pretty straightforward. So if we have someone that's very excited, someone who is proud of themselves, we did the calculations correctly. We have 69.08. My party people, are we done? Because I see the answer is C. Are we done? Are we done? We should be happy, right? We're done, right? We're done. We're done. No, we're not. What do we forget? We forgot one thing. Times 90. We forgot that we're not doing just one revolution. We're doing 90. Big key. Big key. So with that said, we now need to finish the problem off by saying, hey, we need to do this times 90 revolutions. Yes or no, does that make sense? Before I actually do the math, does that make sense? We only had one revolution. We actually got to do 90. And so, again, this could be a crazy problem if you didn't know the formula, if you missed the part about the 90. This is what makes these questions differentiating between people who are failing and people who are passing and people who are getting really high scores. But we identified the work we have to do. Don't be afraid. Let's get it done. And so, whether this is your first or 50th YouTube video of mine, it doesn't matter. Why don't you join me for a live class? That way you can ask questions, raise your score, and get the job you want for free. Again, I host classes once a week on Zoom, typically on Mondays. So go ahead and click the link up there or down here somewhere, register for free, and you get my free practice test that has video solutions so you can learn from every mistake. That's what it's all about here, my party people. I want to help you succeed, so don't hesitate. Sign up for free, and then let's get back to this problem here. Let's keep raising our scores. So 69.08 times 90. I'll do that right over here. And again, I'll give you an opportunity to take a screenshot in a few moments. Multiply by 90. Again, this is not going to be crazy at all because we have 8 times 0, 0, 0. All of this is going to be 0, so don't even worry about it. Now we're going to go to the next line, to the 9. I'll put the 0 because we're dealing in the tens place now. And here we go. 8 times 9, that's 72. 
Zero times nine is zero. Carry the seven is seven. Nine times nine is 81. Carry the eight. Six times nine is 54. Carry the eight is 62. And so there we are. We add this back and we get the same thing because all we had was zeros above. What do we do at the end, everybody? What do we do at the end? Same thing as always. What do we do with those decimals? All right, we bring them back. We bring them back nice and easy. We go one, two, one, two. So now we have 6,217.2 inches. That is 90 revolutions. Again, this was one revolution. This was 90. And so there we have it. Let me move my ugly face out of the way so you can take your screenshot. But yes or no, let me know if you understand why C is not the answer, but it's actually B as the answer. And before you go, if you like what you saw and you want to raise your score with thousands of practice problems just like that, so you can lower that test anxiety, raise that confidence, go to this link right here to check out the full program. There's a video that shows you exactly how it works, but you're gonna get lessons, guided practice, worksheets, speed drills, and everything that you need to feel supported from day one all the way until you pass. Again, I'm Coach Anderson, and I'll see you soon.